Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Olivia Flavius from Media Tech Home and in today's video I am over the moon excited to share with you guys 10 DIY Dollar Tree Christmas in July decor crafts. We're going to be doing bows, wreaths, and some other super fun crafts. Easy, budget friendly, using Dollar Tree and inexpensive supplies. Also, don't forget to comment down below and subscribe to my YouTube channel to give yourself a chance to enter and get one of these Louis Vuitton fake, they're fakes, but they're super cute purses. Um, I'm doing a giveaway. I'm doing a giveaway on YouTube, on Facebook, and on my Instagram. So you guys don't want to miss out on that. All you guys have to do is to comment and follow. You don't have to enter any, any information. I won't private message you. I will simply announce it on the date of the giveaway winner, and I'll leave that in the description box below. Okay, you guys, I know you're here for the crafting, so without further ado, let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafting. For this DIY, I'm gonna share with you guys a super easy bow hack to make holiday bows. You're gonna take your ribbon, it's wired ribbon, and you measure it from your hand to your elbow. That's gonna be about 12 inches. And then you just take the ribbon and loop it over on itself six to eight times, depending upon how full and fluffy you want your bow to be. This is ribbon from Hobby Lobby, and it's the value ribbon, so it's pretty inexpensive, and you get a ton of it, and it's 50% off right now, so check that out. Okay, so once you have your ribbon loops ready you're gonna find the center so just gently bend it in half to find your center and then grab a zip tie some floral wire or even a pipe cleaner and you want to secure your ribbon in the center of the bow where your bow is going to be okay this is such a super easy bow I promise you I'm bow challenged and you guys can totally do this one now you're going to grab an extra piece of ribbon and you're just going to take that ribbon and wrap it around the center where you zip tied that ribbon and just make like a little easy knot that's going to cover up your zip tie but it's also going to give you some magical tails boom you guys this is such an easy bow to make it's maybe not the fanciest bow but i'm telling you i think it looks really cute wait till you see how great it turns out okay so now that you have this done, you're going to take and you're going to pull the root ribbon loops out one by one. You really want to make sure you get all those ribbon loops pulled out and fluff them really well, especially once you put your bow into your project. So if you're using this bow for your Christmas tree or a wreath or a garland or a mailbox decor, maybe on your front porch, wherever you're using it, after you secure your bow, you need to go back in and fluff those loops again because it like kind of mushed up a little bit and you really want that bow to stand up really pretty. And always check when you're buying ribbon, it should always say on the pack, the side of your ribbon package that it's wired ribbon. Definitely try to use wired ribbon. Okay, here's a little hack for you. Take your ribbon and fold it in half and then cut a little triangle in the end. Check that out. That is going to make your project look really nice and finished and you wanted to have a really nice finished look you've spent a lot of time working on your wreath or your Christmas tree or your garland or whatever so you really want to make sure that you do that last nice little step especially if you're selling your item you're gonna see some awkward mom dancing in my Christmas videos my Christmas series I just get super excited about it. I dress up for it um, and it just makes me really happy Christmas is probably one of my favorite holidays so if you have any funny um edges to your uh, bow just trim those off so here is how it turned out I put it at the top of my tree now I did layer some more ribbon on top of that I'm going to share with you guys how you can do that using even Dollar Tree ribbon surprise surprise Dollar Tree is putting out ribbon that's wired they're doing a lot better job with their ribbon too so keep an eye on what they're putting out now I haven't shopped Dollar Tree yet for Christmas but I do have some fall ribbon left over it's the red and um, kind of cream colored buffalo check plaid I'm going to layer that into it and then another smaller ribbon so here is how we're going to do that so this is again a totally great little bow hack measure that ribbon from your hand to your elbow this is dollar tree ribbon surprise surprise it's left over from fall so always think outside the box when you're shopping you're going to take that ribbon loop it over on itself and then you'll find the center um, don't forget to dovetail your ends and you just take and cut that little triangle in the end grab a zip tie tie that off with a zip tie and fluffy duffy out your bow 
Remember, fluffing those ribbons and bows are super important. It's really going to make your project look even nicer. And then to make tails, you're just going to take an extra piece of ribbon and tie that in the center. It's going to do double duty. It's going to give you tails. And it's also going to, um, whoops, <laughs> it's going to... Um, uh, cover up the zip tie, you know, you don't want to see that. So then take that those ribbon loops and each one of them you're going to fluff them out. Now I will tell you the Dollar Tree ribbon is a little bit more flimsy. <laughs> it doesn't stay as um, nice and standy uppy as um, the other one. Okay, so we're doing a triple layered bow. These are one of my favorite holiday Christmas tree dropper bows. I'm going to use a smaller um, ribbon. This is like a gingham check ribbon. It's so sweet. It's from Hobby Lobby. It's a little bit different size, which is nice. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing I'm gonna loop it over on itself about six times find the center tie that off and then layer that into my last piece of ribbon another little hack for you is when you're adding that last tail you can tie that into the entire bow and then you don't have to use another zip tie or you can zip tie them all together really whatever suits your fancy and whatever you're in the mood for and again my favorite part, fluffing out those bows. I love big bows and I cannot lie. If you guys are a 90s girl, 2000s, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I love my bows. <laughs> That's just me. And if you love bows too, you're in the right place. <laughs> I got a lot of bow videos and I have a lot of fun with my bows. Okay, so I'm going to tie it off again, like I was telling you, with that extra piece of ribbon. I'm going to give you some tails. I actually film and edit all of my own content. Um, it's not super high tech, but you'll probably notice me like looking in to see, and I use my iPhone. So that's another funny thing. The viewfinder is very, very small. So <laughs> I always hope for the best when I'm editing these videos. Okay, so here is how it looks. Check this out. Ah, I love bows. You can pop that onto the top of your Christmas tree and bam you are in like Flynn and I added another layered bow back on top of that and look at how fancy this tree is I love it um, this is a really really tall tree I don't ever heavily decorate these taller trees but for my studio it's such a small space in this corner that I share with you guys that I'm crafting I thought let's snuggle one in here make it super fancy and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it I also added a ladder over to the side I hung my little Christmas aprons um, my kiddos like to pop into my studio my girls do and they'll wear a Christmas apron and we'll do bows together so I'm really hoping that that happens this year um, or bake cookies or whatnot now this is a gingerbread themed tree and I'm going to share with you guys kind of step by step how I put all this together I do love really fancy over the top trees you don't have to go this crazy but I think it makes it like a fun designer look and th this is going to be my grandkids tree just so you guys know I have kids in college now if you've been with me for a while you've probably listened to me talk about my family a ton um, and they were little when I started my YouTube journey well not super little my son was already in high school but my daughter was she was little so you guys have kind of DIY. I want to show you guys how to make a super awesome jumbo Christmas wreath using pool noodles, a hula hoop, and some duct tape, and a little bit of fluff for the bows on top. Now, listen, what you guys want to do is grab a hula hoop from the Dollar Tree and two pool noodles, or one, depending upon what size your hula hoop is. They actually do have different sizes. Cut into the pool noodle just a line down the very center till you get to the little center prong, and then you can just take and wrap that around your hula hoop. Bam! We are on our way to making a huge, awesome um, jumbo wreath. Now, I would suggest this would be a great wreath to use outdoors as well because it's going to be pretty weatherproof. You're going to do the same thing with the other pool noodle. Just cut that stream right down the center and then latch it on to your hula hoop. And again, bam! Now you have a very, very large wreath to kind of play with. Now, for this one, I wanted to just take some red duct tape and I think I grabbed this at Walmart. Dollar Tree has duct tape but you might want to grab the Walmart duct tape because there's a lot on the roll and you'll get more bang for your buck. In fact, I did duct, duct, duct tape Christmas presents um, last year. So that was a fun one. So you're just going to take and basically wrap the duct tape around the pool noodle. And if you want to make it really cute and kind of candy striped like this one, you'll just leave a little bit of room um, with the white showing through. Now, try not to get frustrated. Your duct tape might be a little bit bubbly here and there, but it's really not the end of the world. Also, the duct tape is going to help the pool noodle kind of secure onto the hula hoop a little bit better. 
I've done these before and shared them with you guys and you can also add burlap around them or you could even take some Christmas tree evergreen garland and do that as well. So now that we have our wreath base complete, we're gonna make a super adorable little Dollar Tree bow. Take your ribbon and measure it from your hand to your elbow and that's gonna give you um, 12 inches and just take that ribbon, loop it over on itself till you get to the end of the roll if you wanna make a big, nice, fluffy bow like I am. And then if you have any other ribbon, I had this cute little candy striped ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna do the same technique here and just take the ribbon and loop it over on itself until I got about six times of looping it over on itself and that's going to give you three loops for each side trim that off and then pop it into the center of your first bow and then take a zip tie and zip tie that off now this is such an easy bow anybody can do this bow and you know how i know because i'm totally bow challenged and i love big bows i cannot lie <laughs> Anyway, take those rip and loops and pull those out. You can take any little scraggly ends, cut those off, or you can just kind of curl them into the rest of the bow, which I always leave all of my ribbon ends on and just give it a good fluffing. It's just gonna make it a little bit fuller. And then you can take and attach that with another piece of ribbon. And also, if you're gonna be putting this out side you might want to add a zip tie um, to the base and then cover up the zip tie with some ribbon give your bows another good fluffing once you get them onto your project that's always something i recommend now i'm going to take some of this dollar tree deco mesh and i'm going to take and make a big deco mesh bow so again same thing here you just take the deco mesh loop it over on itself to where it makes a big giant fluffy bow i feel like we had such big giant bows back in the 90s and I am a 90s lady, you guys. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side and all I did to secure that underneath my smaller bow, as you guys can see, is adding a zip tie and bam! We have a huge, massive, giant bow on our two and a half foot little hula hoop wreath here and it's about two and a half foot with the bow, so. You know, it's like that bow, it's that big hair, big bow. I don't know, there was a saying about it back in the 90s. Anyway, I hope you guys are loving this and are totally inspired. And comment down below, let me know what you think about it. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I want to show you guys how to make a super easy little Dollar Tree deco mesh. So from the Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby, you can grab some deco mesh and you're just going to cut it in about 8 to 10 inch strips. Listen, I just want to encourage you guys on deco mesh. It's so easy, so forgiving and fun. And I will tell you Hobby Lobby has all of their deco mesh half off. I believe these rolls actually did come from Hobby Lobby. I missed out on some of the Dollar Tree Christmas mesh this year. And then the next thing I want to do is cut 8 to 10 inch. Um, strips of this Dollar Tree ribbon. This is wired ribbon and then I'm just going to dovetail the ends by adding that little triangle to the end of it. I'm going to do the same thing over here cutting the strips of candy cane ribbon. This is from Hobby Lobby. Now I'm not super particular about my cuts. The next thing I want to do is just take the ribbon and you're just going to zhuzh it. So you're just going to take the piece of deco mesh and ruffle it in your fingers and then add a piece of ribbon on top of that and then zip tie that little bundle together so what you're going to do next is make a ton of bundles you might want to pop a fun tv show on when you're doing this and um yeah super easy there so fluffy out that but little bundle with the mesh and the ribbon and all of that good stuff and then you're going to have some bundles to add to your wreath okay listen you guys if you want to get really particular on your cuts some people i know are and they want to measure each one and that is great but for instructional purposes for me because i do these diys i do so try to cram so many of them into a day and i am a, a mom and that kind of stuff and so i have a lot going on um, i'm not super picky on my cuts on the ribbon but you can definitely get a little bit more precise with your ribbon cuts if you want or or you can just kind of freehand it like I do. Just whatever floats your boat. Hey, this is your crafting station. Now, the next thing I wanted to do was just add them to one of these little um, wire loops. You can also add them to a Dollar Tree wreath form. I happen to be out of wreath forms, could not find them anywhere. And then once I got done with my project, guess what I found? Or guess what I saw actually hanging in my craft studio on the wall? was a wire wreath form. I looked high and low everywhere, except for I guess right where it should have been, hanging on the wall. <laughs> anyway. 
I know if you guys are a crafter, you feel me. So what I'm doing is going every other one and just zip tying the deco mesh loop-de-loops onto the wreath form. This is such a super easy process, you guys. You're just, I mean, it's pretty much a no-brainer. You're just gonna continue to add them and then you're gonna wanna kind of squish them together a little bit. You wanna pull some of those ruffles out. That also helps but you're just going to add all of your little loop-de-loops onto there. Now I'm saving on my zip ties by just zip tying them directly to the wreath form because there's only one prong on here. You can do it either way. You can zip tie them as bundles or you can zip tie them onto your wreath form, whatever works for you and however much supplies that you guys have on hand. I do try to it's, you know, do my best with supplies as everything that I make you know, I pay for it. Anyway, I added a cute little bow to the top of that and a fun Santa sign and boom, there you guys have a super easy little Dollar Tree deco mesh wreath. You guys can change this up and pretty much use any color that you want to and to make that um, a loopy bow go back and check out some of my bow, bow, bow videos but it's super easy you just loop the ribbon over on itself add a big giant deco mesh bow to the top and bam you're good to go Okay guys, for this lantern DIY, we're gonna make a big loopy bow with this Dollar Tree Deco Mesh. We are just gonna take the Deco Mesh, loop it over on itself until we get a big, giant, nice little loopy bow and trim that off. Now, this is such a super easy DIY and this Deco Mesh came from Dollar Tree, but you guys can find it at pretty much any craft stores. We're gonna make a fun little Christmas lantern bow topper. And what I wanna do is grab a zip tie and zip tie this all together. That way it stays on there nice and sturdy. You guys, I love to make lantern toppers. I always see them like in the floral department at the grocery stores and they're so pretty, but they're really expensive. And I'm always wondering, hey, we can do this on a budget. The next thing I wanna do is just just zip tie my big giant fluffy deco mesh bow to the top of my lantern. I like using zip ties because it secures things on here really well and things don't um, wobble around, especially if you did these lanterns outside. Now I'm going to make a quick little loopy bow. So you're going to take and measure the ribbon from your elbow to your, um, or from your hand to your elbow, and then just take that ribbon and loop it over on itself. I like to do it about six times. That gives you a nice, good, full, fluffy bow, but use whatever ribbon you have on hand and add whatever many loops um, to your heart's content is my suggestion. But looping it over on itself six times is going to give you equal distribution of um, loops three to three. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, this is not hard. I promise you. It's such an easy bow. You're going to zip tie that in the center and then zip tie that to the uh, larger bow. Or you can take and you can cut a big piece of ribbon like what I'm going to do to save on your zip ties and also cover the zip ties and just cover that original little um, zip tie up. So you take and tie this on to the center part of your deco mesh bow and that's also going to give you some tails. Hey, we killed two burns with one stone. The next thing we want to do is just take those little loops and pull them out. Ooh, so, 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 so pretty. And then we're going to take and dovetail those ends, cut a little triangle in the end and wrap those up. How nice is that? Oh my goodness, you guys. I just love these. I think they're so fun. You can fill this with ornaments. You can add ornaments to the center, which is what I'm going to do. This cute little Dollar Tree ornament to the center. And then you guys have a fun little Christmas um, decor piece. You could add evergreen to the center of your bow. So many fun ideas on a budget. Now in this video, I'm also gonna include some little blasts from the past with some peppermint crafts. It's actually gonna be the most popular video of the week from last week was a deco mesh tree that I did. Um, I believe I did this two years ago. So I'm gonna add that in towards the end of this video. Um, but it's going to be a deco mesh Christmas tree using Dollar Tree supplies. I have not found any of the mini Christmas trees yet, but I also haven't been to Dollar Tree yet for my Christmas supply shopping. I have a lot of stuff that I'm really just trying to use on hand this year. Um, so 
you know. Anyway, I'm adding in a little bit of an evergreen sprig. I thought that would give this some dimension and just jazz it up a little bit more. I think that's pretty. Let me know what you guys think and don't forget to drop a kind comment down below and let me know how you are doing. Um, I am doing a Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway. So all you guys have to do to enter that giveaway is subscribe to my YouTube channel and comment down below. And I always love to include a secret question. Today's secret question is going to be, what is your favorite character that you have for Christmas? So right now I'm using gingerbreads as my character, but what do you guys like? Do you like um, gingerbread? Do you like to do a Mickey Mouse Christmas? Um, what are the characters? Maybe elves? Maybe, um, gosh, I don't know. I know there's so many out there, but hey, drop that comment down below. Let's light up this comment section with your favorite Christmas characters. And then here we're going to see several different peppermint crafts, the deco mesh tree, and then some easy ones for kids. So keep watching in this video. And I love y'all so, so much. So blessed to have you here. Now I'm just going to take my little Santa, this is just a little planter type pail that I found at Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to take two of those Dollar Tree Christmas trees. This is a secret little way that I love to make the Dollar Tree Christmas trees appear just a little bit fuller. Just take them, pop them in some styrofoam, whatever container you love, and then take them and kind of wind them around each other, and that gives the appearance that they're just a little bit bigger, and I did have to reposition this as well, and I did hot glue the styrofoam to the base of the little Santa pail. So I'm really loving this so far, and this is a super fun little idea for a kid's room or just maybe a smaller space, a kitchen counter or your office or whatever floats your boat. So now I did go ahead and use some of that Dollar Tree candy stripe mesh and I'm just cutting 16 inch pieces. What I want to do is create some little poofs to kind of tie into this tree to really doll it up and kick it up a notch. These would also be really fun to make if you guys are doing craft fairs or for a little teacher gift. They would be great for a little classroom. So just take and roll your mesh uh, bundles into just little curls. So you just take and you curl them up. It's super easy. And then you take a pipe cleaner and you're just going to pipe cleaner them right onto your Christmas tree. And don't be afraid of that deco mesh, you guys. I promise it's super forgiving. You can't go wrong with this, especially when you just do the rolls. You guys can see I'm just taking it and rolling it into a little curl and then pinching it between my fingers, add a little pipe cleaner, and voila, you have a ton of fun little dazzling poofs. Okay, so for this Christmas tree, I wanted to let you guys know that I did use two rolls of the Dollar Tree white with little red candy stripe mesh. But again, you guys use whatever colors you have and whatever planters you're going for. So maybe you already have a little planter at home that you could paint to match whatever Christmas decor you're using. Try to use what you already have on hand. I definitely always encourage that. So I just went ahead and created a bunch of those little poofs and then I'm tying them into this adorable little tree with the pipe cleaners. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a quick little Olivia bow. You're just going to take and you're going to loop the ribbon over on itself. And I looped it over on itself twice, as you guys can see. And then I'm just going to pinch it in the center. And I'm going to go ahead and take another pipe cleaner and just wire that together in the center and then tie it right onto my Christmas tree. And you guys have fun with this. Again, use whatever colors that you love and that you have. And then once you get your little Olivia bow, ready and you guys can notice that I didn't notch it um, I'm trying to repurpose and reuse some of my ribbon this year so I may not be notching all of it but if you notch it in the center like I've shown you guys before it does help you poof it out a little bit better so anyway I did go ahead and just poof this out by pulling out each loop and then I used a little bit of that extra tail to kind of create a loop at the top and here it is oh my goodness so sparkling so adorable I did take some of that Dollar Tree candy cane ribbon and kind of cascade it down the fronts and sides of the tree just to give it that little extra pizzazz that you guys know that I absolutely love. I think this is so fun and adorable and just a great way to add some pops of color to your holiday decor. And of course, you guys know Santa Claus loves those chocolate chip cookies, so definitely don't forget to set out some milk and cookies or hot cocoa for Santa on Christmas Eve.
I want to create a super adorable little peppermint ornament. So I'm just taking a red and white pipe cleaner and I added some hot glue to the end. And then I'm just going to take and I'm going to begin to wind it into a little circle to kind of make it look like a peppermint. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. So I want, I wound it a couple of times and then I added some hot glue. Be careful if you're doing this, if you are sensitive to getting burns easily, I am using a low temp glue gun. So that really does help me because I can be kind of messy with my glue, um, but it is a little bit tedious um, to hot glue in these little super small spots. So I did just go ahead and loop it around several times until I got the right size. And I did trim off the excess because I didn't want it to be too oversized for this smaller tree. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take some Dollar Tree. These are the little straws. You find them in the food storage aisle. That's where my store has them. And then I'm just hot gluing this to the top of this. And then I want to trim it off. What I want to create is a cute little lollipop ornament. I think this looks super adorable, but you guys know I have to go a little extra and add a cute little candy cane ribbon. Again, the sky is the limit, you guys. Whatever colors you love, use that color pipe cleaner and create whatever kind of colors. I think these would be absolutely adorable to do in pinks, whites, blues, purples. I just Definitely may even be creating more as the season goes along and I share with you guys different styles and colors of decor for Christmas. So here they are popped onto the super adorable little Christmas tree. These are also oh fun and very, very budget friendly. And I really feel like it gives it kind of that custom boutique finished look. I feel like this looks really high end and actually not something that you would see coming from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> Comment and let me know what you guys think. And do you guys do a candy cane theme? This is the first year I've ever done anything candy cane theme, but I thought it'd be so super adorable for my kitchen. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to take again some of those little party straws. And this was one straw that I cut into three pieces. And then I have some of those little Dollar Tree pom-poms. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hot glue the pom-pom to the top of the little straw. I'm going to create another little candy piece, but this time it's going to be kind of more of like a sucker. This kind of reminds me a little bit of Whoville from Dr. Seuss, um, like a little bit of a Dr. Seuss type ornament. So anyway, again, you guys think you can use whatever colors that you have. And then of course I am going to go ahead and create a bow. So when I tie a bow for these little smaller ornaments, I just tie it kind of like I would be tying a shoelace. So I just take it and loop it over and pull it through. And then I want to make it really small and that can be a little bit tricky. So if you find little pre-made bows already done, that can be really fun if you're doing craft fairs because bow tying can be a little bit time consuming. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and hot glue that bow underneath our little sucker piece. And this is going to create some really fun, very inexpensive ornaments for your little candy cane Christmas tree. Darker paint and then just a little bit of white whisper on the front of that. The next thing I wanted to do was take some of this Dollar Tree. This is kind of like Cricut sticky paper, I guess. Um, and I just cut a slim line of it and used that um, for my check pattern. Now you could also hand paint the check pattern that was on the original little McKenzie Child's truck, but I thought this would be fine as well. And it's already done. And um, I'm going to have to get some new paint brushes. I realized it today while I was painting some of these things that they're in a little bit rough shape. Okay, I also added it to the top because they added checks to the um, top and bottom of their truck. And then so to do the wheels, I just took the bottom of um, my little paint container and traced around that and that fit perfectly for the wheels on my truck and I actually had just glanced at the McKenzie Child's little ornament before I did this and didn't even think to really go back and try to really dupe it perfectly so I realized I need to go back and do a couple of things but hey this is a really great idea so this is a high-end designer dupe McKenzie Child's is um, a really high-end designer located out in New York originally and um, they just do some really incredible hand all of their items are hand painted and so I know why their stuff is so expensive because it is hand painted but hey we can hand paint some of our stuff using Dollar Tree supplies so 98 versus a couple of dollars I think we're doing pretty good now I love to use this paint pen it's the deco art premium paint pen it's about five bucks on Amazon and it really gives that gold um, edging that they like to use in the McKenzie Child's designs they actually use real some 
real like gold, I think, in some of their paint or some kind of real gold. Um, if it's not real gold, it's some type of fancy something. Anyway, but this um, paint pen outlines your project and really makes it gives it that final finished edge. I've also used just regular gold paint too. So here is how the final project looks. Um, I've always been really intimidated by these Dollar Tree signs, you know, that are just blank. So here's just an idea. Go on the McKinsey Child's website or order one of their calendars or catalogs. They're totally free. You guys can look at those and then dupe some of their items with next to no money besides just pay. So I hope you guys are loving it. Comment, let me know what you guys think. And if you want to attempt something like this, fun and fabulous on a total budget. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I have to share with you guys how to make a super adorable Christmas sign on a total budget. So grab one of your Dollar Tree fall signs or any sign and find some of that Dollar Tree wallpaper. I love this kind of faux wood look. Trace out the sign and then add the faux wallpaper to the back of the sign. And you can even like maintain your original sign. So it's like a double-sided sign. Okay, so once we have that done, I took this merry and bright wooden cutout. Sometimes I wonder what to do with these. If you guys I see these at the Dollar Tree. There's a ton of them. Now they are delicate, so when you're painting them, be a little careful. Sometimes they'll break loose, but I'm using this red. It's like a candy red um, paint, and I just painted it the candy red color. Then I'm sponging some of this. It's kind of like a charcoal gray paint over that, and then I even added a little bit of white with my sponge brush, and I'm watching this video and just remembering I did not put my sponge brush in water, so it's going to be probably ruined and dried out. Anyway, so I'm going to take some sandpaper and just sandpaper that off to where you can just kind of see the red, but it's not quite so vibrant, which, hey, the vibrant red is beautiful. Um, but here's how it looks. It looks a little bit distressed since we are putting it on kind of that faux wood background. I thought that would be really, really cute. So the other thing I wanted to do was make kind of like a Mackenzie Child's sign dupe. And so I'm gonna take some of this black and white check um, pattern paper. It has a sticky back. They're selling at Dollar Tree, my sweet friend, Stacy sent some to me and let me tell you I'm just using the heck out of this um, you could also paint checks on but I'm not sure that the checks would be painted on very easily on that faux wallpaper okay the next thing I want to do this is, was probably the trickiest part of it was hot gluing these letters on you may be able to use super glue so you don't have to deal with the sticky parts um, that like to push through from the hot glue but I was able to get it on and it went just fine I feel like this is a really cute sign something that you would see for like you know 10 15 dollars maybe at a home decor st store or walmart or hobby lobby and bam we just used we repurposed and reused one of our original dollar tree signs a piece of craft paper and the cute little wooden cutout i think you can make all kinds of signs like these you guys you could even add a bow to the top or some burlap or something fun to match your decor you could also think about you know customizing this idea to match your decor so it doesn't necessarily have to be these colors and style you can make this glam with beautiful glitter you can make it blues pinks you know really any color that suits your fancy so here it is merry and bright i think it looks super adorable with the santa this is another mckenzie child's dupe which i'm going to share with you guys in another video later later in this video so fun and fabulous on a budget great little idea for a fun easy sign For this next Dollar Tree DIY, we're gonna do a super adorable Mackenzie Child's dupe. It's gonna be like a little Santa ornament. And some of their ornaments on Mackenzie Child's website are $100 plus. I know why, they're hand painted, and they're absolutely beautiful. But just take some painter's tape and one of those Dollar Tree wooden and cut out Santa signs and then tape off squares. That's basically all you have to do. You don't even have to have tape, you could just cut like a strip of paper. But what you're gonna do is just make a template of checks and that's gonna give you that Mackenzie Child style. You could also Mod Podge some checkered um, craft paper onto here as well. Now, usually I like to 
paint the base of it white and I forgot to do that. So I'm just going back in and touching it up. And a lot of times the Mackenzie Childs, if you've seen some of their pieces before and you look up close, it really does look very hand painted. They kind of like to drag the black and white together. And so um, I tried to kind of do that with this one. The next thing I wanted to do was go ahead and paint my little Santa face white and then give him a red rim hat. I know Santa usually has a white hat, but because, you know, I'm doing the majority of the rest of his head kind of white with, cause he has such a white beard. I just thought that would stand out more. I gave him a cute little pink nose. I didn't do any eyes on him. Sometimes I feel like my eyes turn out weird. And so I just didn't want the pressure of that today. And I think that's okay to do sometimes just have fun crafting and do what you can do. That's you're comfortable with. I'm using this deco art paint pen and I'm just outlining the entire thing with this gold paint pen. If you notice a lot of the Mackenzie Childs, um, stuff has like this gold edge rimming and that's also why their stuff is so expensive because of that really specialty paint that apparently I think has some gold flecks in it like real gold anyway that's what I read somewhere and don't quote me on that I'm adding in some detail to my Santa and then I felt like it kind of looked a little bit too like swirly so I decided to make his beard have a little bit more dimension and so I'm adding in um, white paint and then I'm just layering it I did take private art when I was a little girl um, and I did a lot of pastel work and uh, I noticed that with the pastels, my art teacher would teach me how to layer things. And so that's one thing that I know to do to add dimension when you are doing painting or pastels or anything like that. Um, so you just keep layering your whites and your darks together and just really blending them almost like you would blend your eyeshadow. So you can see that I'm just adding layer after layer after layer, and I'm not even washing my brush, which you probably should, or you should, you could use different paint brushes. Um, but here is how it turned out. And I kind of gave him some like little whiskery, like hairy um, eyebrows. I don't know. I thought that was cute and it was easy. And I'm telling you, I, I can't even convey to you guys how much that um, painting really just makes me feel relaxed and just happy. Um, so if you have the opportunity to sit down and do something like that, maybe you're struggling with depression or anxiety or just you just need a break from your mental clutter, which <laughs> I have a lot try some painting, get your paintbrush out and don't put any pressure on yourself. Just have fun. Um, if it's a $1 cutout, you can't really w ruin it. And if you do, which I have before, you know, you can toss it, you can repaint it, you can use it as a coaster. I don't know. Have fun and get creative and go for it, you guys. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I just wanted to share with you guys another super easy little Mackenzie Childs ornament dupe. So I'm using this Dollar Tree wooden lantern, and this was sent to me by my sweet friend Stacy. Stacy, thank you so much for sending me things. A lot of times I don't even get to the Dollar Tree before everything runs out, so I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so I painted this um, little lantern in red, and I think this is such a cute little lantern. They look so pretty lit up. They have like a little light inside, and then I added black toppers and black to the base. I really want to make it look like more of a high-end ornament. So I'm using some of this gold paint pen to edge it out. And this is the Deco Art Premium Paint Pen. I find mine on Amazon or the craft store. Um, but you can use paint, you can use gold paint as well. Here is how it turned out after all my painting. And then I'm just going to take some of this Mackenzie Child's ribbon and really try to use what I have here and just cut a little small strip and then loop it in half and just pinch it. This is just such an easy little bow. I, it's what I call like a little tuxedo bow. I used a piece of yarn to tie it off in the center and then I'm going to add it to my lantern. And you can get really creative with this. Just grab whatever little strip of ribbon you have at home and you don't even have to use ribbon. You could just call it good or add some evergreen to the top. Whatever suits your fancy. I did add a tiny dapple of hot glue and I'm just going to hot glue that to the top of this. And then I'm going to take this um, other piece and I'm going to twist it. And I did dovetail the ends of my little bow and give my little cute ribbon some tails. Mm -hmm. So that is how that is going to look. And bam, how adorable is this? Yay! I love making fun little ornaments. I did decide to add some pine, some mini pine cones to the top. Dollar Tree sells little tiny mini pine cones. I found some in like a garland. But here's how it looks so far. And then I'm going to add some of those little pine cones to the top. I need to go collect some real pine cones. There's actually a tree down the hill from my house that um, drops big, beautiful pine cones. I'm thinking about that now. I think I, I remember sharing with you guys how to even bake pine cones to get like the little, They I guess they have little kind of um, 
bugs in them so you bake them and you can add cinnamon to them and I need to do that craft again for you guys this year and really uh, paint them and I'm thinking maybe I'll do like a Mackenzie Child's dupe type um, Christmas tree in my regular tree and just do tons and tons of crafts so I had so much fun painting these today it really relaxed me and just again like I'm telling you guys are going through stress a painting to me is really good for your mental health <laughs> You know, um, I just laid down some Christmas wrapping paper and paper towels and paints and paintbrushes. And I know some of the painting videos probably don't get as many views as like the deco mesh and the big wreaths that I do. But gosh, this was really nice. So I'm thankful for everybody that might be here watching it and maybe needs that encouragement to take some time and get out some paint and try not to feel intimidated by it. Because if you have some white chalk paint, that will pretty much paint over any mistake that you make on anything like this. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you guys how to make a super adorable little Mackenzie Child's dupe. And this is going to be a snowman. So grab the uh, little wooden cutout snowman from the Dollar Tree. Or Walmart is also selling wooden cutouts. Actually, a lot of the stores are Hobby Lobby and all that good stuff. So, um, And then just paint the entire thing with a white chalk paint is how I did my base. But you guys can really do any color that you love. I'm going to add little stripes to the hat with some red paint. And and then go back in with some white paint and just color that in. Um, listen, Mackenzie Childs is a high-end designer. They make beautiful hand-painted items. Their items are really, really, really expensive. Um, and I know why, because they have actual artists that sit in there and hand-paint them. Um, so I respect their work, but I also think that I can do this on a budget and share with you guys if you love that designer look without the designer cost. I'm adding in some little green paint to the top of this to rim out his little hat. I gave him a carrot nose and then I'm going to give him a cute little green scarf. Today's work I really wanted to just try to relax and I kind of made it a little bit more simple. I didn't do any faces on any of my characters. Sometimes I feel like when I do faces it just gets to be too much. I'm not confident in my faces and I wasn't feeling confident in my ability to do those today. So I just felt like relaxing and leaving the faces blank and just adding um, the checks and stripes where need be. Sometimes I think we need to give ourselves a break. You know, I have a lot of expectations a lot of times out of my spell, self, and I also want to try to give you guys the best content and artistic, you know, um, creativity as possible. But I also think sometimes we just have to relax and have fun. And that's really what creating art is all about. And, um, I think art is really good for your mental health, so I want to encourage you guys, if you might be struggling with any kind of anxiety or depression, to go to Walmart, grab some inexpensive cheap paints, a little wooden cutout, and find something that you're inspired to kind of paint on that. Um, and you can even go on Pinterest and look up DIY, you know, painting eyes and different things like that. Or you can do like a Mackenzie Child's dupe, like something like this, and just do the checkers. I love the checkers, and it makes me just feel accomplished. Something about doing those little boxes, um, for some reason for me, it just, I don't know, it relaxes me, so I'm weird. <laughs> I'm using the gold paint pen to edge the entire project and really just kind of bring things together. What it also does, too, with the gold paint pen is it cleans up your lines. So if you've made some upsies or your lines are like a little bit funky, it can kind of do that. Now, my paint pen was running out, so I kept having to shake it and press it down, but um, I think it came out really, really cute, and these are going to fill up my Christmas tree. I want to do a Mackenzie Child's Christmas tree, I think, this year, or at least a small one. I don't know if I'll be able to paint enough ornaments to actually make that happen, but I might try it. I just might try it. Or maybe I'll just try to paint as many as I can, and then if I have enough to do a big tree, I will. If not, I'll just maybe do some of them on a small tree. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. So I hope you guys are inspired, and as always, drop a kind comment down below and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video, which one you will be recreating. Don't forget to enter my $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway. That's going on my YouTube channel. All you guys have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribing is totally free, and comment down below. Okay, so check out Benji Bear. He got dressed up for you guys today in his Santa scarf. You can go on Amazon and type in dog scarfs and they have packets for like 10 bucks and they have 
every holiday under the sun. It's so cute and so fun. And um, my daughter and I love to put this on him when we go for walks out in public. He just gets so much attention. And this is his little green ball. He loves his little green ball. And so Benji Bear, I know Benji Bear has a little fan base out there. So he wants to say hi to all the puppy dogs. Woof, woof. And all the kitty cats out there. He wants to give you guys a big shout out. Say hi. Give you guys some wiggles and waggles. He's so funny. And I don't know, something about dogs and pets and babies and crafts just make my heart smile. So here's you guys a smile for the day. I hope y'all are doing good. I hope you're hanging in there and you just keep going wherever you're at in your journey. Don't give up on yourselves and the ones that you love. And I love this easy, inexpensive trash to treasure Dollar Tree DIY. Grab some shoe boxes and cut the tops off. What we're going to do is we're going to create some super amazing little inexpensive uh, faux presents for under our Christmas tree. I see these at Hobby Lobby on Pier 1 and they're super expensive for, for really what they are. So grab a shoe box, cut the top off, and then you can take a Dollar Tree automotive cloth and hot glue around the edge of the box. And this is just a shoe box size. So if that helps for the sizing on the automotive cloths, and then you're going to go ahead and glue and tuck your ends. So glue the top of the box here and go ahead and take the ends of the fabric and then give them a little hot glue and then a quick little tuck. Now I'm going to take ribbon and secure this even a little bit more with ribbon. So it is secured on here, but that ribbon really helps. And I'll show you guys that step in just a sec. So again, you're just going to glue and tuck. And again, you guys, these are so fun to make. Grab some ribbon from Dollar Tree, or I got a bunch of this Hobby Lobby plaid value ribbon. I'm thinking this is going to be a really fun little rustic chic glam video for you guys. So I just cut the ribbon. That's going to get your ribbon to stretch a little bit further, and you're just going to wrap it around, cut and glue, and bam, you have one of those cute little packages. I know you guys have seen them at Hobby Lobby and on Pier 1 Imports and some of your decor stores. Okay, I decided to make this rustic glam, so I'm taking some of this gold ribbon and just kind of wrapping it, layering it on top of the plaid. I want to do Rustic Glam, I think, this year for Christmas. I've really been kicking around, what am I going to do this year? So I'm thinking this might be the way that I might want to go. I have a lot of kind of French country and farmhouse kind of in my home. And so I don't want to like pull all of that out, but I do want to make it a little bit more glam, but kind of keep that country. So let me know what you guys think. Should I do country glam or rustic glam? Okay, the next thing I want to do is take my easy bow maker. And these are on Amazon, you guys. Um, they're so easy and fun to use. But I'm going to make a quick little bow. So I doubled up my ribbon. This is going to be a five inch bow. So you can go five inches, four inches, and three inches, and just use that little prong in the center to kind of hold your bow maker on. And Easy Bow Maker has tons of videos on YouTube if you guys want to see those. And you're just going to dovetail those ends and then take your pipe cleaner and pipe cleaner that off in the center. This is such an easy bow. And I've already put out a couple of bow videos for you guys. Just go check out my I Love Christmas series and you'll find more of those. Okay, now give your bow a really, really good fluffing. That's really what you want to do. Always try to use wired ribbon as well. Now from Totally Dazzled, and I will leave a link in the description box, but Natalie is my sweet friend and she has this cute little bling company. I'm going to add some bling to the center of this bow. Might as well. You could add jingle bells, pine cones, whatever suits your fancy. But again, I'm doing like that country glam. I want to say like Dolly Parton meets Garth Brooks. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. And then I added a couple little pom poms to the back of that bling jewel so it doesn't like wobble around. I made several of these. I'm going to share with you guys how to make the little buffalo check plaid one. I'm really crushing on that one as well. I think I might also bring in some red. So thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It's a true blessing and honor to have you all here. If you all are new, welcome. I am Olivia from Romania.com and I love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. I truly believe that you don't have to make to have a fabulous, amazing home. Also, don't forget to subscribe and comment down below so you guys can give yourselves a chance to enter into my Louis Vuitton purse giveaway. It's a fake. It's not the real thing, but it's a great dupe. I've had mine for a couple years and it's held up amazing. And listen, I love purses and I'm not enough of a purse snob that I even really care. So if you guys want to enter to win one, just comment and subscribe. I'm giving away several of them. So go over to my Facebook, my Instagram and look for 
the um, purse giveaway. You guys can comment down below to enter. Listen, I just want to encourage you guys to keep up the good work no matter where you're at. Everybody is on a different spot in their life journey, in their crafting journey, in your decorating journey, in your mama journey. Um, for me, I'm going to be an empty nester soon, which blows my mind because um, I think for the last 20 years, all I've known is to be a mom. So, um, you know, as my daughter's high school years draw to a close, I'm just kind of really getting into figuring out what I want to do for the next, you know, 20 years. Excited to be a grandma when it's the right time. <laughs> So anyway, I just want to share that with you guys because no matter where you're at, I just want to encourage you guys to keep going. And when you wake up in the morning, God has given you a gift. You opened your eyes, try to look at every single day as a new adventure um, and all of that kind of fun stuff. So um, I say that because recently I broke my ankle in January and I was in a walking boot for three months, you guys. I got pretty down towards the end of that. I wasn't able to craft. I wasn't able to do a lot of things that I love, um, but I kept moving, I kept going, and eventually I got back out of the boot and now I'm into my cute boots again. And I can't really wear heels quite yet, but it's coming. So, you know, things happen, um, or our lives change, our relationships change, um, but really try to pour into yourself. Um, I am a believer, and so uh, my faith helps me so, so much. Do good by others, and they'll do good by you. And also, listen, I want to also remind you guys um, that you're on a social media platform. This is kind of a thing of mine. I like to remind everybody in every single video as much as I can to be kind online. Our world has moved into more of a online presence. Um, and so remember your words have power. Sometimes we feel like we don't have any power, you know, um, but we do, and we can use our words for good. Uh, the Bible even talks about, um, you know, using our words for good, to build others up, to lift other, others up, to forgive one another. So if you guys are scrolling on your Facebook or Instagram, whatever, and you see somebody post a picture of their grandkids, their hubby, a cute project they've done, Give that, um, you know, post a like, give it a heart, give it a, give it a sweet comment. And if you see something that you don't like, keep scrolling. You don't have to put that negativity out there because when you put positivity out there, you don't know how you're gonna be blessing somebody's hearts. Listen, we might smile and everybody might think everything's okay, but sometimes we're going through something that's really, really intense or really, really heartbreaking. And so you just don't want to catch somebody at that moment where they're super down and then say something negative. And, you know, think about if you said something positive to somebody and they're really, really down, how much better that's going to make you feel, them feel, all that kind of fun stuff. So anyway, just keep that in mind and know that I love y'all. And if you guys like to craft and decorate on a budget, I have been on YouTube now for five years. Somebody said six, maybe six. I don't know. Gosh, it's been forever, it seems like. Um, but you guys just go into my YouTube uh, channel, binge watch some of the fun videos. I just love to craft and decorate. I've always crafted since I was a little girl and I love to do it on a budget. You know, um, I'm still in the same little starter home as when I started. I try to bloom where I'm planted and just really uh, pay respect to what I've been given and try to be a good steward of that. So anyway, I love y'all to the moon and back. I'm going to hug all of your hearts so tight. I'm wishing you a gorgeous, fabulous, blessed day. I hope you enjoyed this Christmas in July and it gives you a little bit of a reprieve from the heat. I know where I'm at, it's 100 degrees plus. Um, so wow, it's it's hot here. Um, so crank your AC down, put on a fun Christmas movie and just get into the vibe. Christmas is one of my favorite holidays. So I love y'all to the minute back. We're going to do more Christmas in July. We're going to be doing some fall crafts and some more just fun crafts. So until our next video, remember be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Ooh, ooh.